This is the Game 14 press conference featuring the Florida State Seminoles, joined by student-athletes Kaylee Mudge and Elizabeth Mason. Questions for our student-athletes, go to Nick Kelly. Elizabeth, on that uh, the home run pitch, uh, what would you see from her, and, and what did that, when you were able to hit that home run, what did that do for you guys, just your energy and, and really believing this could happen? Um, obviously, Montana Fouch has a great rise ball. She also spots a couple low in the zone. Um, I just wanted to get the barrel there. She supplies a lot of power. As long as I could get the barrel through the zone, I knew it would be a hard hit. I'm just glad it went over the fence. Um, I think a home run in the first inning, it's a great way to start the game. Obviously, we um, tend to score later in the game a lot after we get through the um, after we get through the lineup one time. But I think setting that pace for the game was well needed. Allison Posey. Hey, Elizabeth, just a question. I asked you before you left Tallahassee if you had a nickname for this team yet and you didn't have one. Do you have one now? First question. And second question, just the fight in this team. I mean, the young lady next to you, young player, everybody uh, tonight just, just fought so hard. Um, I still don't have a nickname. I don't think we get to choose the nickname. I think the fans will come up with one. But it's amazing to see Mudge's performance tonight. She, she's been one person on our team who has worked tirelessly day in and day out. She's had it in her from day one. I think as a team, we've had it in us from day one. Um, couldn't be happier that it's coming together now, and I'm, I'm so proud of Mudge tonight. We all are. Melvin Stiff. Elizabeth, uh, congratulations to you and Kaylee um, and the whole team. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about your defense? You get a lot of um, attention for your offense, obviously, but you've had to adjust to a new position at first base, and you had some really nice picks out there today and then that great cutoff throw. Can you talk about how, you've, how hard you've had to work on that? Um, when you have a coach who believes in you enough to switch your position every year, you, I owe it to her to be the best I can be wherever she's going to put me. Um, defensively, we know we have strong pitching staff, and um, – Defensively, all we can do is, you know, do the best for them, give them the support that they deserve, and um, put it together offensively as best as we can and make sure that, you know, we hold that game down. Kayla, okay, let's follow up with you on the defensive end. You made that great diving catch in the seventh inning against, against Bailey. Uh, you know, you have to obviously respect her power and play her a little deep, so you had to come in pretty hard. Just take us through that play. Yeah, we were back by the warning track because we know how much power she has. She hit a home run earlier in the game and she's a great hitter. So we were giving her that respect. And when I saw her go up, go up in the air, I just wanted to make a play for Danielle and make a play for my team, so. Joey Hilmer. Yeah, for both of you all, um, you and your opponent in this um, WCWS finals both traveled the same path, losing your first game and uh, winning all the way through. What um, gave, you, gave you all the belief that you could go ahead and in 2018, your program did this as well, but to win all these games in a row to get to the championship finals. Start with Kaylee, please. Yeah, I wasn't here when they won the 2018, um, but I remember watching on TV and I just remember how much fight they had. And I think that's what we have this year too. We just have a fight for every pitch to the left and our right. Um, I just think if we look at the end goal, then we get too ahead of ourselves. So we can't control the outcome of any game. We've just been trying to fight one pitch at a time. Elizabeth? Um, I think there's something special about FSU that allows us to block everything else out, block out the stats, block out the outcome, block out anyone who's not in our corner. And, you know, we just look to our left and our right. You know, I look to Danielle, I look to Mudge, look to our coaches, and when you can fight for them, all you want to do is give one more pitch, one more opportunity, and one more game. And that's what we did in 2018, and we know we can do it again because we've been there before. Graham Hayes. As for both players, uh, this isn't a team that relies on home runs, but you had three big ones in recent days from Danny and Anna and you, Elizabeth, today. When you're at the World Series in this kind of setting, do those kind of hits build a momentum or energy beyond even the runs they produce? Start with Elizabeth, please. I mean, a home run is definitely an energy builder, momentum builder, but um, – Obviously, it's not the end-all, be-all for a winning team. I think we've been able to put together runs um, and wins 
offensively, um, situational hitting, you know, just trying to scratch and claw. When we can get those home runs across, I think it's like a really big um, cushion for our pitchers, and it really loosens us up to just continue to get one run at a time. Kaylee? Yeah, I agree with Lizzie. Um, we've all season we've just fought to try and find runs as best as we can, and home runs are great. Situational hitting's great. Um, we just try and play one pitch at a time, putting the ball in play, and just trying to run the bases as best we can. So just finding a way to score runs. Home runs are great, and they give a lot of momentum to us. But so does situational hitting and base hits. Edwin Stanton. Elizabeth, uh, I don't know if this has already been asked, but could you talk about the game plan coming in from Montana Fouts and what were y'all seeing from her that just made y'all uh, very so confident to play today? Um, obviously, coming off of a perfect game, Montana is an amazing athlete, even better of a pitcher. Um, saw a lot of strikeouts on that rise ball up in the zone. Um, she brings a lot of velo to the plate as well. Just trying to get the barrel to the ball, um, see it down. She does spot a couple down in the zone, so um, just doing our best to lay off that rise ball. And when she does miss, to make sure we're ready for that pitch. Kurt Weiler? Uh, I know, obviously, we don't have either of the pitchers here, so I'm going to ask you all about them. I mean, you knew how loaded the Alabama lineup was. I mean, Catherine was the one who, who did a lot to get you all here, but just what can you say about what all three of them, you took all three of them tonight to kind of be able to hold off the charge? Start with Kayla, please. Our pitching staff has been amazing all season. We've really relied on them heavily, and Kat started us off, started us off great, and then Kaylin came in and Danielle came in, and they all pitched their butts off. So it was just fun to see them all come together for a big win for us. Elizabeth? Um, when you're one of the last four teams left in the nation, um, there's going to be hits. Obviously, Alabama, they're a top four team, one of the best teams in the nation. We would expect nothing less from them, but our pitchers, they have worked so hard. Um, they're amazing. They dominate. And when, when they do slip a little, there's always someone there to have their back. The second, the second cat um, got a little shaky, it was Kaylin. The second Kaylin, it was Danielle. And we know that they're going to fight for us the same way we would fight for them. And we just have so much confidence in them. And it allows us to just be even better teammates, even better defense, and, you know, get some stuff going offensively as well. Elizabeth, Kaylin, thank you very much for your time. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We are now joined by head coach Lonnie Alameda. Questions for coach. We'll begin with Allison Posey. Hey, coach. Congratulations. Um, just wanted to talk to you. you. We've talked to you before about the fight in this team, but but it's everybody. I mean, you have Lizzie, the, the senior, who obviously had that big hit for you guys in the first. And then it goes down to Mudge, who's a young player on this team. What is it about their ability to fight and, and the culture that you've created here at Florida State? Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, been the whole journey of the season. I know our upperclassmen um, and our returning World Series players um, really wanted to share the culture, the experience, the the fight pitch by pitch, and yet they had pressures of their own trying to figure them on themselves out and how to compete also. And so um, I think the culture piece has really got us through here because there were many times they could have given up on the process part, and that's been so important to us, but yet – we have such a good foundation of family and, and the competitive nature, and we keep bringing those, those values up, and we keep talking about them, and it, I think it just kept the fabric uh, of our team together to give us the opportunity to be able to shine uh, towards the end of the season. And uh, I couldn't be more proud of Elizabeth. I, I know that uh, she's wanted to lead and lead this team, and it's hard as a leader. It's really hard. Sid Cheryl, we talk about all the time, Danny Morgan, uh, and then you got Kaylee Mudge is going to give you everything she has. She's going to follow, and she's going to give her heart out. So now it's all of a sudden coming together, and and they're just, like they said, to the left and right, fighting for each other pitch by pitch. Tom Tibbetts. Coach, the, the fan base just obviously it goes without mention. You know, every road game, it feels like you guys are at home playing at Graf. But there was this cool moment in the broadcast where they, where they showed the, the Canadian national team watching you guys, mm -hmm. supporting you. Obviously, I know you have that relationship with them. But to see your brand, Florida State Softball, being supported uh, on different international borders, different countries. Just how, how cool is that? 
Um, really cool. I did not know that happened. I mean, obviously, Kaylee Rafter is a Florida State alum, and um, you've got a lot of um, collegiate players in that group, so they, they love the game of softball. And um, I am fortunate to be able to be their pitching coach this year in Tokyo, so I am tied to them quite tightly, and uh, I'm really proud of the opportunity. But I think that goes to the, the big picture that we've been talking about a lot. I mean, softball is – incredible and people want to support it and they want to grow it and and you hear you have a team taking time out while they're training for Tokyo to to watch the College World Series I think that's super special. Graham Hayes. Hi Lonnie uh the the sport has moved so much in recent years toward the home run and you've you've had teams that have hit home runs recently but what role does other methods of run production still have in in, in, in softball and what this team was able to do? Yeah, I mean, I think it's so important that when you get to the biggest time of the year that um, good pitching is going to beat hitting. I mean, that, that's just the thing, like good pitching beats hitting. And um, when you get here, you've got to make sure that you can link those at-bats together and however it happens. And, and for this ball club, we've had to link at-bats all, together all season, so we're very comfortable with that. We're comfortable with failing. We're comfortable with having quality at-bats. We're comfortable with moving our runners. And then if one crooked letter goes up because someone gets a three on home run, that's bonus for us. So I think when you have to rely on it, which is going to be something that we're going to be watching here in the next couple of days because, I mean, Oklahoma is incredible the way they swing the bats. Um, but if you can get that glue one through nine and people off the bench to do do their job to just keep the lineup moving, it's pretty special. Nick Kelly. Based on the scouting you did of Montana and just seen her before, I mean, what pitches do you feel weren't there as much for her today? Um, I mean, it's hard to say. She's an incredible pitcher. Um, even I said it yesterday with Kayla Foy, she's a good pitcher. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know. There's pressure coming into these games sometimes too. And I think we did a good job of battling pitches. I, I think when Mudge got in there and she started fouling off stuff, like, um, you know, it was just, let's put the ball in play and let's make her work. And, and that was just the mindset. So I definitely don't know if it's her inability or as more as our ability to make sure that we could use our plan versus her. Um, I think she's, she's incredible and she's had an incredible season and they're a great ball club. Melvin Stiff. Hi, Coach. Congratulations. Can you talk a little bit about um, the 2018 experience and how that's helped you guys this year, if any? You got five players who've done this before. Yeah, I mean, 2018, um, for me personally, uh, and I think for, for Travis when we were part of that, um, we realized that how important it is for them to be comfortable in their own skin as a team. Um, when we lost to UCLA, they, they took a team meeting together without the coaches, and they took control, and they ran with it, and they were prepared for it. Uh, as a coaching staff, that's what you want at this point in time. That you know They don't need to look to you because you've given everything you have to them, and they're ready to play a high-level game. And uh, I got that feeling again. Uh, you know, I, Danielle Watson hasn't thrown a lot. And, you know, when she came in after that inning and she took a deep breath and she was prepared for the moment because of everything we've poured into her and every opportunity she has. And it's just such a good feeling to know that as a coaching staff and Eva upperclassmen, you can share with younger ones for their moment. It doesn't matter how big the stage is, they can execute their moment. And um, I've seen that from 2018 to now start to become this week here. And uh, it's heartwarming. Brian Kelly. Hey, Coach. Is it going to be a little nostalgic looking across in the other dugout, seeing the Crimson and Cream fighting for College World Series title? Yeah, not nostalgic at all. Uh, I'm super proud of uh, graduating from the University of Oklahoma. I'm very proud of um, what we did. Uh, you know, we broke the top 25, and I know ever since then they've done an incredible job. But um, I'm a a big fan of the game of softball and uh yeah like you, you know you, you always root for your alma mater but when you're playing against them you, you root for the team that you're coaching and um i'm excited uh i'm really excited to play in front of a full stadium uh when we came in the first day and we saw the upper deck and i know what it's like you know to be 30 minutes down the road and, and all the state of oklahoma coming in here to cheer for for them and um, it's going to be so special. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Our players are looking forward to it. So it, it's going to be an honor to play here and be one of the team, two teams left standing. Last one for Coach Kurt Weiler. Hey, Lonnie, congratulations. Um, after the, uh, the, the UCLA game, is there a, a moment or maybe a few moments you can pinpoint of realizing that exactly what this team could do coming out of the loser's bracket again, maybe a response or something like that? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think uh, we were fully competing in the UCLA game. I think if we we were kind of dipping our toe in the water and, and seeing if we could compete. And then uh, afterwards, you know, we, we chatted a little bit and, you know, laid out there. And, and of course, in your 2018 veterans are like, hey, we've been here before. You know, it, it's not a big deal if you just think pitch, pitch and just, just get after it, your little moments. Then all of a sudden you look up and you've got some games under your belt. And, it, you know, it's really special and enjoying that, that process part of it. So, um, I can't think of anything right now, honestly, you know, between the late night game and the early, like, I mean, it's all swirling together. Uh, you know, now it's about getting prepared for OU and, and figuring out what we can do there. Coach, thank you very much for your time. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you very much. Next up will be the Alabama Crimson Tide. Be joined by Bailey Hemphill and Montana Fouts, and then head coach Patrick Murphy. If you have questions for Bailey or Montana, you can certainly raise your hand at this point. When called upon, please unmute yourself. This is the game 14 press conference featuring the Alabama Crimson Tide, joined <laughs> by student athletes Bailey Hemphill and Montana Fouts. Questions for our student athletes. We'll begin with Nick Kelly. Montana, just obviously with the first two games, you played so well. I mean, what changed for you today in this one? Um, I don't know. I guess I try to go in with it with the same mindset, just to go pitch by pitch. I guess it just didn't go my way. Robert Cortez. Bailey, um, now that um, your career is over, can you talk about what it's meant to wear the Alabama uniform and what are the greatest things this program has given you and taught you? Uh, first, I want to say congratulations to uh, Mike Kendria and Lou Harris Champer on incredible coaching careers. Um, and I guess all I, all I can say is I'm heartbroken. Um, wearing this A has meant everything to me. This university has given me more than I ever could ask for, and I can't help but get emotional. I mean, I don't care about the wins and the losses. I mean, I came out of here as a better person, so I am just forever grateful. Rick Greenberg. <clears throat> hey, Montana. Talk about just how important this senior class has been to uh, this season. I mean, they're, they were everything to us. They still are. I mean, we're family forever, and that's why we, that's why we come here. Um, I mean, they're our best friends. We're family, so I mean, it, it hurts. It hurts. Um, but they led us, and we've learned from this year and this season, and we've learned from them in general as people. So we're really lucky to have them as part of our family. Katie Wyndham. Bailey, what kind of fight did you see out of your team after the 8-0 deficit to try and get back in it? Um, even you with your home run, just what were you doing to try and get your team back in it? I, I just feel like we're never out of the game, you know? I, I'm so proud of this team. We could have just folded right then and there. I mean, we could have gave up more runs. It could have been a lot worse than 8-0, 8-0. And, I mean, we're just we're resilient and we're gritty, and I think we showed that. I mean, it, it was a challenge coming back. I wish we could have came back and won it, but – I just show, I think we showed the type of fight this this team and this program has had in the past. I mean, it just sucks that we couldn't get it done. Edwin Stanton. Uh, Bailey, you look like uh, y'all are a little bit uh, anxious at the plate tonight. Seven first pitch swings, uh, six second pitch swings, putting ball in play. Where is it? Uh, were y'all just not patient tonight? Um. I just think after last night, I feel like we were too we were too patient. So we wanted to, the the game plan was to be more aggressive. And I mean, 
I wasn't in the batter's box with everybody else, but I think they swung at good pitches. We just missed it. We couldn't. We couldn't come through. We couldn't. We couldn't get it done. But I, I mean, again, I'm just so proud of the fight that we showed. Nick Kelly. Question for both of you. I mean, when you look back on this year, what do you think is going to stand out to you most? Start with Montana, please. Um, well, first, I'm I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be here at the World Series just because it's a dream come true. So I just think that just the adversity that we faced, I think that we're going to learn from that because we made it so far with that. And I think that we could have went further. Um, <clears throat> But um, just learn to be resilient. And I think that being resilient and gritty is a lot more than just maybe having all the talent in the world. I think that those characteristics are more important. Bailey? I think the biggest takeaway this year is just the adversity that we face. I think, again, it's not, it's not going to help us. In, I mean, it will help us in softball, but it's going to help us in life. I mean, all that we face, that everybody faced the pandemic. I mean, but playing a collegiate sport during that, that was tough. Um, we had to sacrifice a lot. And again, people that had injuries this year, that's adversity and they're gonna bounce back. And I just think it's just life lessons and it's just gonna make us better people. Ron Snyder. Bailey, Ron Snyder in Lafayette. What's just your message to just the rest of the Lafayette community and other STM graduates about just being successful softball players and, you know, going to a different state like Alabama like you did, what's just your message to anybody coming up in softball at STM and just to KDN in general? Um, I guess my message is you can do it. I mean, Lafayette, it's not a small town, but, I mean, there's some good softball players there. I mean, you don't – you can play anywhere. And I'm so thankful for all the support I've had over my career from Lafayette. I know all those UL and LSU fans, it was tough to say roll tide for me, but they did it, and I'm, I'm so grateful, and I love you guys. All right, last one for our student athletes, Ron, Ron Smith. This is Ron E. Smith, and this is a question for both the athletes. If there's, there's one person, too, that always believed in you guys, and he always kept preaching about how your fight and your grit and never, ever stopped, even today when you guys were down. Your coach, Pat, Love you guys and just gave you nothing but praise. So I just want to know what what good, what great things can you say about him? Start with Montana, please. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better coach. That's a tough one. I understand. Bailey, you want to take a crack and we'll come back to Montana? Um, I'm, I'm going to get emotional, too. I mean, he's never done this one time, you know? It's it's hard to talk about it because he means so much to me in this program. I mean, think, if you look in the stands, how many alums came back? Like, we have so much respect and love for him, and it, it, he made it truly a family. So, I mean, for him to believe in you, it makes you feel like you can do anything in the world. And so I'm, I'm so grateful he took a chance on me and let me play at this university. Ladies, thank you so very much. Congratulations on an incredible season. We appreciate your time all week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now joined by head coach Patrick Murphy. Questions for Coach Murphy. We'll start with Brett Greenberg. Hey, Coach, congratulations on a obviously a wonderful season, not the way you want it to end. But uh, Bailey Hemphill was asked what you meant to her, and she uh, couldn't really put into words. Uh, what has she really meant to you after uh, she's just played her last game in an Alabama uniform? Well, <clears throat> she's, uh, she's taught everybody on the team to be more joyful and, you know, relish in all the little things because that's what she's done for five years for us. You know, she's, she's very, very tenderhearted and she's funny and she keeps things loose. But obviously she's, you know, one of the best hitters we've ever had in our program, best players in our program, one of the best leaders. You know, she graduated with two degrees with 4.0. I mean, there's, there's nothing that um, she could improve on in her career here. She's got fans from people who are 80 to eight years old. 
Um, she speaks well in front of people. I mean, she's the ideal person to represent the University of Alabama. Robert Cortez. Coach, um, you've mentioned in the past that this is one of the most grittiest teams you've coached. Can, now that the season's come to a conclusion, can you talk about how much of a privilege it was to coach this team? Well, you know, and, and I echo what I think Bailey said, you know, we it was a quick eight to nothing and um, shoot, we could have got run ruled and they fought back. And I thought, you know, I think Savannah hit one right on the nose. And if, if that goes, you know, either way over the kid's head or in front, side to side, whatever, uh, that was going to be another run. But that was a, you know, a good play by the right fielder. And, you know, they showed a lot of grit and some fight. Uh, you know, Kilfoyle came in, put up all the zeros that we needed, and, you know, we were just like one hit away. So, um, really proud of everybody. Edwin Stanton. Hey, Murph, I was talking to uh, Elizabeth Mason. She said uh, the game plan for coming in was to kind of lay off Montana's rise ball and make her work. Uh, you just talk about uh, what Florida State did tonight and how they uh, just – got to Montana? Well, you know, I, I should have started with this, but congrats to them on a hell of a tournament. You know, they, they won four in a row again. And um, obviously they're very talented and they fight like heck too. And, you know, um, hats off to Miss uh, Kaylee Mudge as the leadoff. You don't see five for five. I, I haven't ever in Alabama. Um, for, for a kid to go five for five against two really good pitchers, that's uh, – an awesome feat by her. Um, but I think sometimes, you know, unfortunately, we might have had a bad day and they took advantage of it. You know, the first inning, uh, the three hole hitter um, got the home run and put them on the board quickly. So, um, you know, they, they knocked her out. So they had a good plan. Nick Kelly. Yeah, and in terms of when you're kind of going through the first couple of innings and things happening fast, I mean, what, what, what went into the decision making in terms of uh, Montana and, and putting Lexi in? Well, it was just, it was kind of getting out of hand and we needed to stop the bleeding, you know. Um, that was basically it, give them a different look, see if, you know, Lexi could slow them down to give us a chance to get back in the game. And she did that, um, you know, but just tremendous experience for both of them. You know, one's a freshman, one's a sophomore. And, you know, I called them the Twin Towers one day in practice, and um, they're going to be awesome for the next, you know, two and three years. So it was, it was great to see them, you know, have tremendous outings here. Um, we hope to be back, you know, finish out their careers here. Katie Windham. Hey, Coach, you already touched on Bailey Hemphill, but uh, we've talked about him a lot this year, but these seven super seniors that got this extra year to come back, can you talk about them getting to close out their careers here at the World Series? You know, some were injured like Claire, some haven't gotten to play as much, but then some like Bailey got to go out with a home run in her last game. So just hit on what they've meant to this program. Well, they're just great, great young ladies. And, you know, you've heard me say this, but for, for those who haven't, you know, six of them got their master's degree. And that's – unheard of for a, a, a softball player, you know, six master's degrees and the seventh got a double major and she's going to get her master's next year at Southern Miss. So education wise, they're covered. And it's just, it's a really cool thing to see um, that many young ladies um, do so well academically. Not a problem off the field. I mean, just great young ladies, classroom practice, weight room, you name it, never had issues with anybody. Um, and this is another reason why people should support softball. There's great people, great young ladies in this sport that people can attach themselves to. Montana and Bailey are two of the best in the world. Um, just awesome people and tremendous athletes. Nick Kelly? When you look back at the season, I mean, 20-game win streak, just timely, I mean, just so many different things. What's going to stand out to you most, do you think? I think – how we got there with all the adversity, um, you know, we went through it a lot. It started way last March. So we're about, what, 16 months into it, 15. Um, lots of stuff in the fall, injury-wise. And then, of course, in the spring, two ACLs, a kneecap, um, a back. 
a stress fracture, um, you name it, we had it. Um, and then dealing with COVID, which everybody else had to do. So, um, and you know, they did sacrifice a lot because we asked a lot of them. I remember I sent out the, the parent letter at the beginning of the, the semester and it was double the normal parent letter and the do's and don'ts and um, these, this is why we're doing this. And, uh, and God bless the parents too. All the families of our young ladies are terrific because they had to sacrifice a lot because it was a totally different scenario when we went on the road or we were at home playing. So there was a ton of people that bought into our program and that's one of the main reasons we're, why we're here today. All right, Coach Murphy, thank you very much for your time uh, throughout the week. And uh, hey, can I, can I say one thing too? For uh, I wanted to congratulate Mike Andrea and Lou Harris. Oh, please Camper. do, please do, yes. Because you know Mike and Lou are two of the stars in our profession, and two of the greatest coaches that I've ever played against. And I'm really going to miss competing against them. And one quick story on Mike. You know, it was my first year, and we went to UCLA. We were probably the last team picked out of 48. We got our asses kicked twice. And I saw him that summer out recruiting, and he probably spent an hour with me in a tournament uh, talking to me about, you know, when it gets down to the big time and um, you need a couple little rabbits in your lineup to put the ball in play and make people throw it away. And um, I tried to listen to him and learn from him, and um, just I appreciated all the time and effort that he gave me, and, and Lou as well. She was one of the feistiest competitors I've ever had to played against, and I know uh, we're going to really miss her in the SEC. Coach class, as always, thank you very much for all your time. Thanks a lot, and thanks for, to everybody here.